Okay. Tower of Fantasy, certainly not what I was expecting to come out this year. Considering there were a whole bunch of rumors which were like, oh man, all these Tower of Fantasy announcements are fake, a la di da di da. However, it turns out that a lot of it might be true, and so with that being said, hi. Welcome back to my channel, my name is Lace, and today we're going to be talking about Tower of Fantasy. A lot of different things to talk about, so I'm talking CBT, I'm talking like global release, I'm talking more than just global release, I'm talking console release, I'm talking... There's there's quite a lot, including potentially a little bit of drama, if you care about that or not. But that said, let's jump into the content itself. So, I do have like some recordings in terms of the gameplay, however, this is from CBT China. And so to be honest, I just wanted to like really quickly run through this because there there are a lot of other game footages that you could look on YouTube for, uh, certainly a lot more up to date. However, what really attracted me to this game was the fact that like it had such a relatively deep character customization uh, system. So as you can see over here, you can actually like, you can't switch clothes because you gotta, you gotta earn those in game, but then you can also like switch up the hair and the color scheme and all of that. So I think uh, like a lot of people said, I eventually settled on a character that kind of looked like Seelie from Honkai Impact 3. I don't know if there was some hidden biases, but uh, let, let's have a quick look. So yeah, this is what my character ended up looking like. And so let me just go forward a little bit and show you guys a little bit of the gameplay because there is a lot to digest here. So we just went free falling off a cliff. Now this game is really, I would describe it probably as a mixture of Genshin Impact's world. So a lot of open world. The combat is probably more akin to Honkai Impact, kind of blended with Genshin, but it's a lot faster paced. And there is certainly a more vertical element to it. And that's probably the thing that I like the most about this game. So if we click, click Z over here, or was it two? I can't remember. You can see that we have initiated our booster rockets, which is which is pretty sick. And then we can glide over to locations, etc, etc. And on top of that, I think you guys have already kind of grasped that this is more of a sci-fi game. Like, look at my legs. Uh, well, the lack of her. <laughs> so yeah, we're looking a little bit robotic. It's a lot of like steampunk. I'm pretty sure I just fell and died. Okay, not quite. But it's pretty clear that it is quite a different genre from Genshin impact. So here is a little bit of the basic combat. It involves a lot of weapon switching rather than character switching. So as you can see down here on the right hand side, we have like swords, we have a dagger, and then each of those weapons have a skill. This is very much what the gacha is going to be revolved around, as far as I know at least, because unfortunately I didn't have the chance to actually play the CN release. However, that said, I think that's a pretty good summary of Tower of Fantasy in a nutshell. So let's talk about all of the different intricacies in terms of like what exactly is coming, dates and all of that. So let's start things off with the official website. As you can see over here, they have launched their website. And on their website, you can see that there is a closed beta test recruitment. You can go ahead and try click the sign up now button, but it actually doesn't work. Thankfully, I got the link to the closed beta test recruitment over here. And so you can see the recruitment period is from now, the middle of March till the end of March. And so this closed beta test is going to actually start and kick off from April. And I'm not actually sure how long it is going to run. The form itself is actually quite straightforward. You just choose which platform you want to use for the CBT. I do believe you are locked into the choice. So I guess what I'm getting at is be aware that there is a PC client. What you guys just saw on the footage, this is actually the PC client, not an Android emulator. I mean, technically speaking, you could argue that this is potentially a reskinned Android emulator, but I, I rest my case. Coming back over here, like it's very, very straightforward. You just like fill it out. It's probably like the least amount of questions I've seen in a while. And boom, that is your CBT registration done. All right, so the next thing I do want to talk about is this one over here. And this is really interesting because as a lot of people know, if you have been following Tower of Fantasy, they have been marketed as like a Genshin Impact killer, very much focusing on like that open world exploration aspect. However, I do believe that kind of midway, they switched over, pivoted, towards more of like an MMORPG feel. So why exactly am I talking about all of this? MMORPG, RPG, whatever, like this is all gonna come down to this question over here which is multi-platform. For Tower of Fantasy CN, we were only able to use Android, iPhone, as well as PC. So I actually was able to play on the iPhone for the beta. However, as you can see over here with the Google Translate, do you have any plans for console release for PS4, PS5, and Xbox? And if I highlight this and do the translate, you will see it will be played on smartphones and PC, but the console is under development. I don't know if it's coming to Nintendo Switch, but at least we can say 
probably for PS4, PS5, and Xbox. Honestly, pretty exciting news. I do personally think that multi-platform is the future of gaming, being able to play on like your PC and then switching over to your Nintendo Switch and then maybe going onto your PS5. And then if you're on the move onto your phone, that's probably like what I'm most excited about in terms of like the near future of gaming. And so, yeah, as you can tell, I think this is honestly fantastic news. Okay, so I kind of need to address the elephant in the room and that is, well, why exactly? am I looking at a TOF JP Twitter? And that is because we might be, maybe, 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 maybe getting a simultaneous release with TOF JP. Honestly, that's really, really exciting because that's like my next kind of priority. I really love simultaneous releases such as like Alchemy Stars, such as Genshin Impact. Yes, we do lose some of the foresight in terms of, oh, you should save for like the next six months because this new character is coming, but it's just a lot more exciting. So the reason that I do think that there is going to be a simultaneous release is because I actually posted 43 minutes ago, this bad boy over here. Let me do the sneaky Google Translate and you will see the next adventure is with friends, la di da di da I'm glad to finally announce it to everyone, CBT recruitment will start soon. It looks like tier FJP is going to also be recruiting, similar to how we had this for their own server. And to be honest, that got me a little bit hopeful, so I just went over and tried tier FKR. Uh, no cigar, my Korean friends, no cigar. Now let's start talking about this guy over here, which is how exactly is tier F doing in the China server? So as you can see to the majority of you, this is probably just a foreign language, a bunch of moon runes. However, this one over here essentially means China. And then this figure over here, 4579, is the revenue in RMB of the Tower of Fantasy on the iOS platform. Underneath that, I hope it's pretty obvious, 7784 is the revenue for Android for Tower of Fantasy. And so first of all, this is measured in ones. So this is in 10,000s. And so we have to multiply it by 10,000 to get it into like the $1 figures. And then on top of that, we also need to convert it from RMB over to USD or whatever you want to do. And that, my guys, is exactly what I did. 4759 from iOS plus 7784 from Android, multiply by 10,000 to get it into like $1 figures. And then to convert that from RMB over to USD, it's going to give us a figure of 20 million US dollars in revenue in China alone in February. Like you guys can think about how like pretty crazy that is. 20 million revenue, although again, it is still quite early in the release. There are certainly not many gacha games that are able to pull this kind of money. And to be honest, I think the only fair comparison is to compare against other games in China, considering like, well, that's their market, right? And so let's head on over to this guy over here. And I have selected Punishing Grey Raven. As you can see, like it's still doing relatively well in terms of its own revenue. However, it's not like 20 million well. Like, don't get me wrong, guys. Punishing Grey Raven is actually doing quite well. This is this is more normal, right? So Genshin Impact is certainly the anomaly pulling like 100 mil a month, stuff like that. And all I'm saying is that Tower of Fantasy is also pulling quite high numbers. I do want to show you another one. I think it was Arknights. So my guys on the screen, we have Arknights over here at 3725 which is only a little bit under the numbers for a Tower of Fantasy. First of all, it just shows you how popular, how insanely popular Arknights is in CN. But second of all, how well Tower of Fantasy is actually doing. Because if I actually compare it to some of the other ones towards the end, I believe like Blue Archive might be over here. Blue Archive, Blue Archive. However, this is the Japanese version. We do have a whole bunch of other games to compare against. 435, We've got the Ensemble Stars. Uh, however, that's only the JP server. Like, look at these numbers. 975, 2243. We're in like the mid to late four digits for Tower of Fantasy. I think another good one to compare against is probably Honkai 3rd, which is up the front. 3345, 5687. Again, if Tower of Fantasy can get it right, and if they can kind of even hopefully maintain some of this, that's gonna be so, so cracked. All right, so the point of this entire exercise, like all this revenue and stuff, is to kind of give you assurances in terms of what could potentially be the player base. What could we kind of expect in terms of like the big updates and stuff? Unfortunately, if I look at Tower of Fantasy over on Twitter, let's have a look at this one. They've got 4.8K followers on TOFEN, and then for JP, they have 12.2K. 
Okay, hold up. <laughs> what the frick global? Come on guys, get it together. All I'm trying to say here is that although it has high revenues in terms of like the CN server, it may not translate over to the global server. So I mean, case in point, we've got Princess Connect. They're pulling like 5 million a month in JP and we're barely scratching like 400K in global. And that is kind of what the Twitters are suggesting, like their follower count. Although like, I don't think they've started marketing yet. So I do believe that these numbers are going to blow up. All right, and so that's probably all of the different background that I wanted to cover. The last thing that I do want to talk about kind of is this stuff over here. So in these Reddit threads, we have a whole bunch of actually really nice information. First of all, published by Level Infinite slash Tencent in global which is as a lot of you who may play Alchemy Stars have noticed, their publisher. So for you guys who don't play Alchemy Stars, Alchemy Stars publisher, Tour Dog Tencent, I'm not even sure who's calling the shots, but they have managed the game pretty freaking well. A lot of listening to feedback, they actually like they included a pity system after launch, maybe like what, six to eight months, I can't really remember. They added a whole bunch of quality of life updates, etc., etc. So yeah, Tencent, Tour Dog, I don't know who exactly is handling those decisions, but there is a pretty good chance, a, a decent chance that Tower of Fantasy may be handled quite well. All right, and so moving through uh, this guy over here. So as you can see from Chemical Teaching 412, we're the Genshin competitor. A lot of the early marketing was very much that. We are the Genshin Impact Killer. And I don't know if that really worked out for them. I would say that it probably didn't. However, I do want to point out this part, and it's that uh, the current perception of the game is that it is filled with a lot of bugs and other dramas, one of which is this one over here, which apparently, like, they were they were caught plagiarizing a small Japanese animation studio's PV video frame by frame. I think there might have been a case of stolen assets or something. I'm just gonna link this subreddit post onto the description below and you guys can check it out yourselves. All I can say is that aside from the drama and aside from like all the bugs and stuff, I personally really had a blast in closed beta test for the CN server. And so at the very least, I would encourage you guys to sign up for the CBT for global and honestly just give the game a shot because you never know. However, my guys, with that, that is going to take us to the end of the video. So I want to know, are you guys hyped for Tower of Fantasy to come to global? I am. It could certainly be the next game I pick up. It's quite high on my list. However, I just need some assurances in terms of the bugs, the quality controls, and the publishing. I really want to see how they are going to handle this internationalization as well as the releases. So my guys, let me know down in the comments below whether you are going to be signing up for this gorgeous game because like, if nothing else, the character creation is great. <laughs> and if you guys do end up dropping a comment down below, thank you guys so much. If you did enjoy this video, please consider a thumbs up. And if you would like to see more, please consider a subscribe. But otherwise, as your girl Meryl once said, I know we didn't even talk about her, all good things must come to an end. And so thank you guys so much for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.